Welcome back to the Marvel Stat video. Today, we are going to be reviewing the contents of the Data Mind Spotlight Caches for the October and November season. These are the primary way that you'll be acquiring new and existing Series 4 and 5 cards to add to your collections. What I'm not going to be doing in today's video, however, is reviewing the power level or synergies of the brand new releases. If you want a full video doing that, you can find it linked in the video description down below. Today, I'm going to be focusing primarily on the generic power level of these groupings of cards based on which ones you might be missing from your collection along with ranking them on my system. For those that aren't familiar with how I try to approach ranking these in a somewhat objective manner, there are four criteria with which I add value to a cash in a given week. They are series five cards are more valuable because they are more collector's tokens to acquire outside of spotlight caches. Big bads, meaning cards that are perpetually series five and will never downgrade to four or three are more valuable because spotlights are the best way to get those. I add another point. If a card in the spotlight cache is what I consider to be a format staple, i.e. a card that's present in a lot of good decks in Marvel Snap. And finally, I add an additional point if a card is a brand new card, because it's going to be kind of hard to tell which direction a new card is going to go in. And a new card is exciting, which I think is beneficial for a cash. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on into the first week of caches that we have data mined. Our first spotlight cash to review today is the last one of the September season running from September 25th through October 2nd. It contains Mobius and Mobius, High Evolutionary, and Kang the Conqueror. As a small spoiler, this spotlight cache has the absolute highest rating on my rating scale of any that we're going to review today. I give it a score of 7. It has this rating because High Evolutionary and Kang are both not only Series 5 cards, but they are big bads, which in Marvel Snap context means that they will never, ever leave Series 5. They will always be either 6,000 collector's tokens or something you need to open from a spotlight cache like this. Past that, High Evolutionary definitely is classified as a format staple. It's present in many powerful decks and continues to be even as the format has shifted and changed over time. And finally, adding the seventh point to this cache, this isn't something that I generally do. This is the only cache I'm going to add an extra point for, but I'm giving a point to this cache this week for Mobius M. Mobius being a format staple as well because I just don't see a world where Mobius and Mobius is not a format defining staple to energy card that you're going to want in most of your Marvel Snap decks. Our next spotlight cache running from October 2nd through October 9th contains Thanos, X-23, and Echo. Overall, I give this spotlight cache week a rating of 5. It has 3 Series 5 cards in it. Thanos is a big bad, and both Thanos and X-23s have been in and out of format staple status as the metagame has shifted around them. Echo is a card that's just kind of waiting for a metagame for her to be relevant in, but if ongoing things ever take over, she'll be a useful tech card that I don't think you'll be too sad to have in your collection. As always, if you're missing a number of cards in the spotlight cache this week and you're interested in playing them, I think a 5 is a solid rating to open for. Our next spotlight cache running from October 9th through October 16th contains the Man Thing as a new Series 4 card release, and then Silver Samurai and Lady Deathstrike as returning Series 5 cards. Overall, I give this cache a rating of a 4 because Silver Samurai is a pretty reasonable format staple in a number of decks. In general, I would recommend spending collector's tokens when you're chasing Series 4 cards. So if Man Thing is the only card you're interested in this week, I'd probably hold your caches if you can afford to spend tokens. Ends. Our next spotlight cache running from October 16th through October 23rd has Black Knight as a brand new direct to series 5 card and then has Stature and Modoc as returning series 4 cards. Because the spotlight cache week does have two series 4 cards in it, it's getting a rating of only 3, meaning I really wouldn't recommend opening your boxes this week unless you're missing absolutely everything and you'd be happy with getting any or all of them. Our next spotlight cache running from October 23rd through October 30th contains Nico Minaru as a new direct to series five card and then has Kitty Pride and Phoenix Force as returning series five cards. The spotlight cache gets a pretty strong rating of a 
five because it is all series five cards and Kitty Pride is a format staple. It's also worth noting that Phoenix Force, while not being an incredibly popular card, is an archetype defining card that can open up a brand new and unique strategy for you to play. If you're missing all of the cards in any week that's all series five cards and you want to play with those, I think it's a fine week to open and this week is no exception. Our final cash in the October season runs from October 30th through November 6th, and it contains Werewolf by Night as a brand new direct to series five card release, and then has Silk and Ghost Spider as returning series five card releases. Overall, I give the Spotlight Cash one of the higher ratings this time around of a six. Both Silk and Ghost Spider are cards that see regular play in a variety of decks, and Werewolf by Night is a brand new Series 5 card that I also expect to be pretty powerful in a variety of shells. Excellent week to open if you're missing all or even just some of these cards in my opinion. Moving on to our first full November Spotlight Week, we have running from November 6th to November 13th, Eliath as a returning Series 5 card, and then Null and Teenage Warhead as returning Series 4 card. This Cash Week is getting the absolute lowest rating I'm giving any in this group, and that is a 3. Teenage Warhead is an absolutely useless card in its current state that I'm surprised hasn't been downgraded to Series 3 already. Null's gotten pushed a little bit out of the metagame, no longer being present in Galactus decks because of Eliath which is also running this week, and the Destroy decks that like Null have been a little bit awkward since Loki was added to the game. Uh, Eliath is a very good and reasonable Marvel Snap card, but it's hard to justify opening caches this week when the other two are so mediocre. Running from November 13th until November 20th, we have The Gladiator as a brand new Direct to Series 5 release, Mirage as a returning Series 4 card, and then Loki as an existing Series 5 card. Overall, this Spotlight Cash Week is pretty solid. I'd give it a rating of a 5 overall because Loki and Mirage are definitely format staples and Gladiator is a new card. I think if you are missing Loki, especially you didn't pick that season pass up, this is a great week to spend your resources, especially because Mirage complements Loki quite well if you're opening and get both of them. Our next Spotlight Cash running from November 20th through the 27th contains Annihilus as a brand new direct to Series 5 card, and then Dakin and X-23 as returning Series 5 cards. Overall, I'd give this cash a rating of a 5. It's got all Series 5 cards in it. Dakin and X-23 have both been format staples at various points of their tenure in Marvel Snap, and both the Destroy and Discard decks are better when you have these cards in them. Um, this Spotlight Cash could put potentially even move up to a six, making it one of the best in these weeks that I'm reviewing because Annihilus is potentially a new big bad to Marvel Snap based on its lore inside of the Marvel Universe. We won't have confirmation of that until we get closer to its release. So if you're looking at this around when the Spotlight Cash will be coming out, check the comments down below because I'll pin something around then if we get that information one way or the other. Wrapping up with our final spotlight cash in the data mines running from November 27th until December 4th, we have Martyr as a new direct to series four card, running with Jean Grey as a returning series five card and Spider-Man 2099 as a returning series four card. This cash gets a very low rating of three overall, two series four cards. Spider-Man 2099 is fairly poorly positioned, just never really doing anything in the metagame. And while Gene could definitely be what I consider a format staple in the right metagames, it's hard to justify anybody opening spotlights in a week where two of the three cards are series four. Before I summarize here what I think are generically the best weeks to open your spotlight caches over the next couple of months, I would again just like to emphasize that which spotlight caches are best for you to open really depends on the context of your collection. In general, you should be prioritizing opening spotlight caches during the weeks that have the most Series 5 cards you are missing if you want to optimize growing your Marvel Snap collection. Also keep in mind that Marvel Snap is a game that you should be playing for fun. So ultimately prioritizing opening your spotlight caches during weeks that have cards to play is what you should be doing. That being said, the 
best spotlight cache coming up generically in my opinion is the Mobius and Mobius High Evolutionary Kang spotlight running from September 25th through October 2nd. The second best spotlight cache in my opinion generically is the Werewolf by Night Silk Ghost Spider spotlight cache running from October 30th until November 6th and the Third ranking generically best spotlight cache coming up, in my opinion, is the one with Annihilus, Dakin, and X-23 running from November 20th through November 27th. I'd love to know in the comments down below which weeks you're most interested in opening your spotlight caches for. For my own large sea creature preferences, I open all new series 5 cards using spotlight caches and prioritize using my collector's tokens to pick up the new direct to series 4 cards at 3000 a pop. As far as variants go, I think I'm pretty likely to pick up the Justina Loki variant that's going to be coming because I really like the way her artwork hits in terms of personal preference as always if you enjoyed my breakdown and musing on this topic be sure to snap that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss another excellent video like this happy snapping folks and thanks for watching all the way through to the end